Today's topic, the Rhino Free Frame. It's a 3 inch frame, 150 millimeters, and molded carbon frame. That means it's 100% made of carbon. I got the big brother over here, which is the 5 inch version of it. It's the Rhino 5. I did this build the last time. It's based on the same idea, which is unibody carbon frame with the upper part and the arms and a bottom plate to fit everything together. How I did that? Stay tuned. It got 53 grams on my scale, I just checked it, and it's a 150 millimeters frame. So today, I'm going to make another quick and dirty build and let's jump over to some details. We got a motor base of a little more than eight millimeters. It's also channeled for the motor wires, like the five inch frame, where we still got thickness of five millimeters over here. The arms are like, let's say 50 millimeters long. Thickness starts from almost seven, getting figure up to like nine, and eleven millimeters out here until fourteen, almost fourteen. So we got pretty strong thick arms like the five millimeters or so here we got the same kind of way to mount our motors motor wires outside channel it in there just check if we got long enough wires and in that case should be to protect the wires and the motors we got this TPU protector supplied as well Gonna be attached like that. What about the thickness of the shell itself? Almost to let's say 1.8, 1.8. It's getting a little bit bigger. But like I checked it before already, and we got an overall thickness of about 1.8 millimeters, 1.8 to 2 millimeters. It's also similar to the bottom plate, where we got 1.8 millimeters as well. Camera angle supposed to be around 35 to, I think, 65 degrees. With an antenna mount over here, this little cut out here, which is supposed to be for the XT60 uh, XT30 battery connector. I'm going to use XT60 battery today. That's why I need to solder it on afterwards. Won't fit in there. We got some ventilation holes over here, and I think these two little holes here are supposed to be for the 2.4G receiver antennas. On the bottom. That's like the bottom plate, gonna fit in. It fits perfectly actually. Nothing to mention about it. We've got some ventilation holes as well. I mean, we don't wanna have hot air stuck in there. We got our little cutout over here for the USB connector, which is very important actually to check first if that fits your stack. I went into an issue with my F4 board where I actually didn't have the right pins so my stack got too high. So I won't be able to reach my USB connector. That's why I couldn't use that one. And use this build over here, which I prepared already to show you how it's gonna look like before it's gonna get inserted. I mean, I have to solder the motor wires first, but that's my compact build. To go through step by step, 
I'm gonna tell you first what components I use today. And we get an iFlight F3 mini tower, that's F3 board and a 4-in-1 ESC. And we got the iFlight Force VTX, which is also the mini version. I used the big version already in the 5 inch Rhino. What I did was I didn't use a whoop antenna because I think it might be too short. So it might not stick far enough through the hole. That's gonna be a that's gonna be bad reception. I think it's gonna be like this. So that's why I wanted to use the SMA connector. I sold it and capacitor in. I have my FreeSky RXSR receiver and the iFlight Racecam R1 600 TPL camera. Uh, what I did with my VTX, like every iFlight part you're gonna receive, there will be this little manual inside and I wanted to use the RX connector which is mentioned over here. So that means I don't have to set my VTX up because I can do it afterwards, but I gotta set up my receiver, what I did already. The thing is, we got space for 37 millimeters. And if I check my ESC, we got 51. So we got more than last time having the Rhino 5 build we just had like one millimeter on each side to fit the board in including motor wires this time we have like three millimeters on each side i still gonna solder my wires on vertically they're gonna come over like this that what makes it definitely easier to fit it in a shell all right, I'm back and I just attached the motor wires to my ESC and on this side it looks like this. I left a little gap from my USB connector on the other side like that. Like I said, I did it vertically because I won't get wider so I have no problems to stack it and to fit it inside. Alright guys, that was the next step. You just have to be careful not to pinch any wires or break something while putting it together. It's pretty tight, so there's not much space. This is how it looks like after mounting the motors. Guys, that's it. Easy, right? Have fun, happy flying and see you next time.